Right, so teaming with microbes is the subject of this talk. Everyone said to me, I can't believe you've taken the graveyard shift because apparently this is the worst time to talk. You guys are digesting, yeah, the microbes in your guts are digesting. Um, so I might actually have to get you to stand up and move every so often, all right? Okay. So um, people often say to me, how did you get into soils? You know, what's so interesting about soils? And when I first started my ecology degree, I was looking to be a great white shark researcher. That's what I wanted to do, was look at great white sharks. And then I discovered plants and went, wow, plants are amazing. And then I discovered soil and went, it's all about the soil. You know, why isn't everyone a soil scientist? What's going on here? And so that, for me, that's what it's come back to everything. We're talking about nutrition, we're talking about ecosystem, health, rivers, streams, the atmosphere. Me and my son have this game of find something that doesn't relate to the soil in some way. And we've played this game for a long time. And the only thing he can't find that hasn't related to the soil is sound and light. Everything else, I can find some kind of twisted way of relating that back to the soil. And it does get twisted, yes. But basically, all life depends upon the soil. There can be no life without soil and no soil without life, they have evolved together. So what I want to do is just basically give you an overview of microbiology, of some of the aspects and things we're going to talk about. Who's been to an Elaine Ingham presentation? I'm going to show of hands. Okay, so some of this will be a bit of revision for you guys. So I'm pleased lots of you haven't, so then you won't be all bored and falling asleep. By the way, I can throw this real good if you do fall asleep. Yeah. Okay, so some of the key players, what are these organisms that we're talking about in that soil environment? The rhizo what? So who's heard of a rhizosphere before? Brilliant, so you know what the rhizosphere is, that's good, okay. And plant succession, which is um, something that some of the grazers have come up with, and uh, Elaine Ingham talks about plant, plant succession. So I don't want to go into that too much, but basically soils are a very complex interaction of a whole lot of different things, that ways that they've come together, microbiology, physics, chemistry, your organic matter, but for a long time, the microbiology really was an overlooked part of this. So when I did my degree in 99, when I finished it, we were still really focusing on that chemistry aspect of soil testing and what's happening with the chemistry, and that's what's going to feed your plants. And it wasn't until I saw Elaine Ingham in 2001, and I went, aha, there's that missing link. There's the biology. Am I talking too fast? I get a bit excited. All right. So yeah, our, our microbes are integral for disease protection. Nutrient immobilization, so we're talking about how can we stop nutrients moving through the system by being held up in your biology. How nutrients can be made available, how we can increase that water holding capacity, how organisms are involved in detoxification and decomposition of, of materials, and how we can rebuild, or build hopefully, soil structure. So microbes are everywhere. Everywhere you look, there's microbes. So these are archaea which has sort of just recently been discovered as being very important in that soil system. But archaea are ex existing in these, um, this is Yellowstone Park, so we're talking about boiling hot temperatures here. We have organisms living in all kinds of environments all around the world, yeah? So bacteria is the most numerous organism and it's everywhere, yeah? So you think about um, the slime that's on your teeth in the morning, yeah? So that's all your bacterial slimes, yep. All over your skin. So if, actually, if you hold out your hand and look at your hand, or look at your neighbor's hand if you want to touch them, that's fine. <laughs> if we actually looked at your hand with an electron microscope, you're not actually seeing skin. What you're seeing is biology. There's biology all over that surface. Yep, just as there's biology all over the surface of a leaf and all over that root zone. Oh, there's a picture of it. That's some skin bacteria. And if you wash it with those... Um, bacterial sanitizers, you're actually removing something that is quite beneficial to the protection of that surface, of your skin surface. So here we've got some compost. So this has blown up 2,000 times in an electron microscope. Who can see the actual compost in this photograph? Yeah? What are these things? It's a red dot. It's a red dot. <laughs> Gold star. I got a smart aleck in the room. <laughs> so what are we looking at here? Huh? Bacteria. bacteria, yep, so these are bacterial colonies. And there's actually different species of bacteria here. You can see how they're being held together. Different sticky slimes. Some of them are smooth, some of them are quite, um, they've got quite an edge to them. What else can we see in this image? So this is compost, what else is living in compost? 
fun, fun guys. So we got some fun guys in here. And spores, excellent. So we're actually in an electron microscope, when you're holding some compost in your hand, and I've got some great stuff in here from Steve Erickson, we're not actually really looking at that surface. That surface is totally coated with beneficial organisms, you hope. You hope they're beneficial. So the key players of what we're talking about in the soil environment are bacteria, the archaea, your fungi, your protozoa, and I'll, I'll show you some images of these soon. Your nematodes and the algae. So the algae, if we're talking about this being a food pyramid, the algae are sitting down at the bottom of that pyramid. So if we spray something like Roundup, what do you think Roundup might be affecting first? Well, it's a herbicide, yeah? So what's algae? Yeah, it's a plant. So you actually take out the algae, which is the very bottom of that food chain straight away, which is like taking the plankton out of the sea. Yeah, just one thought that I had. So bacteria, this slide up here is bacteria and the whole thing is pulsating, moving, consuming and reproducing as bacteria do. They're incredibly important in the suppression of disease in our um, soil environment and actually holding on to nutrients so they will, they will consume very, very rapidly those simple sugars, very simple type materials in the soil bacteria get hold of and they hold it in their bodies. They're very important in your nitrogen cycle and they now think that the archaea is actually responsible for more than 70% of that nitrogen cycle in the soil, not just the, bacteri uh, the bacteria. So archaea are very closely related to bacteria. They have a different um, cell wall. And they make alkaline excretions. So it's actually those bacteria that make the microaggregates that are in the soil. That very, very fine crumb is due to the bacteria in your soil. And it's alkaline. And although a lot of your soil tests might say you have an, an acid soil, that can be due to other chemical kind of reactions, but it's the alkaline that's important for the, actually around that rhizosphere, around the root zone. Here's our fun guys. So this is all under microscopes. You can't actually see these with the visible eye. What you see when you're looking at the compost is actually the whole colonies of, of, the, of the fungi together, not just single fungal strands. They're very important in um, suppressing disease, so they'll actually make like a, a protective barrier around that root zone to keep out diseases. They um, are very important in forming the macro aggregates. So they're, they're important for forming those bigger kind of crumbs that you see in that beautiful crumb structure in your soil that's due to, these, to the fungi. And they make organic acids because they break down more complex carbohydrates in the soil. You think they're breaking down where do you see fungi normally growing if you see them visible? Yeah, under that kind of woody material, yeah? Your more complex things, your fish oils, things that are harder to break down is where you're going to find your fungi. And I had a really lovely photo of what they call a nematophage, which is a fungi that can catch nematodes. So it will actually catch root-feeding nematodes and, and kill them. I think I've got a photo later. So who's heard of mycorrhiza fungi? Oh, that's, that's just brilliant. That's brilliant. And it wasn't even that long ago where people hadn't heard of mycorrhizae, had no idea what we were talking about. And the thing with these guys is they form a relationship with 90 to 96% of terrestrial plants have a relationship with this fungi. It's very important in making phosphorus available. And the other thing that they discovered, which hasn't, I haven't seen the research move too quickly, but they produce something called glomalin. And glomalin is what really gives soil its stick. And they say it's 30 to 40% of the carbon in that soil is actually due to the glomalin, not your humic acids. They say humic acids 27%.